So um, in this lecture, we will try to understand the small signal analysis mathematically. So usually when we start doing the small signal analysis of the circuits, uh, sometimes things become confusing. So let's try to understand this same concept from a different perspective from the, the mathematical perspective. Okay. So imagine I have a function f of x uh, and this is x. So y equal to f of x. Okay. So and uh, this may be the plot of the function. Okay. And let's consider one point here and if I see the uh, in the x-axis the value is let's call it maybe xp okay and so in the y-axis it is f of xp okay so now suppose I have given these two points this is x1 and this is another point x2 and which is near uh, very near to xb okay and corresponding to this one uh, definitely i'll have my f of x1 and here it is my f of x2 okay so now uh, imagine I have been given the value of f of xb, okay? So I have found out the f of xp and suppose this is a very complicated function. It takes a lot of time to do the calculation, okay? So now, uh, and the problem that is given is, to me, is given x2 minus x1. I'm supposed to find out f of x2 minus f of x1 okay so basically i have been given this uh, variation here the chains uh, basically uh, x2 minus x1 and i'm supposed to find out what is the chains in these uh, you know basically uh, in the uh, f of x okay okay so uh, the uh, conventional way is we can definitely find out uh, the value of f of x2 and the value of f of x1 and we can uh, do the uh, difference and then we'll definitely get it but as i was mentioning that uh, it is very difficult to it or it is really time consuming to uh, estimate even one parameter because this f is a complex function and we want to minimize the time taken okay so the other way is because this is very close to this f of x v what i can do is i can try to find out the slope at this point okay so i can find out the slope at this point of this curve at this point uh, of x b and uh, let's call it at this slope m okay slope at this point is m and it is basically f des x okay or which is nothing but uh, i should say that it is basically delta y or change in uh, uh, this y f of x or delta x so this is the definition of my slope so if i know if i have estimated uh, at this point the uh, the, uh, the f des x the uh, differentiation here m then what I can easily write is I can write f of x2 minus f of x1 and x2 minus x1 is equal to m okay so because this is delta y by delta x okay so implies I can easily find out my f of x2 minus f of x1 is equal to m x2 minus x1 okay so what it means is that uh, this is the whole basic principle of the small signal analysis i will be fixing my point of operation at this point and then at this point i will try to estimate the slope the m and if i want to find out the variation in this y uh, with respect to the variation in the x what i will do is i will just multiply with m okay so this point f of x b this point f of x b and x b is called the operating point okay 
uh, in the technical terms in the electronic circuits okay where basically I'm estimating the slope or uh, more precisely DC operating point So where basically we are trying to calculate the slope m so this point where we are uh, trying to uh, calculate the slope m is called the uh, dc operating point okay and the uh, you know uh, f of x2 minus f of x1 which is basically delta y and x2 minus x1 is basically the delta x so these are called small signals okay small signals because we know that this is approximation is valid only when this change is small if this change is too large the straight line approximation is not very accurate okay and this m is also called sometimes the small signal parameters Okay, yeah. Now uh, let's try to understand how to represent the same thing, this basic concept using electrical circuits. So basically, what I have now is so basically, what I have now here this is my y, this is my x, and this is my uh, approximated curve, okay, and which is at this point, okay. which is around this point okay and here I have my delta y and here I have my delta x and the slope of this line is m so we know that delta y is equal to m times delta x now let's see what happens if this x is voltage and y is a voltage parameter how do we represent this okay so let's consider the first case case one if both x and y are voltages So if f and x y are voltages definitely this m will be unitless okay and how i'll be representing it the representation is very simple so so i can simply represent it with a voltage dependent voltage source okay so this is my delta x okay and this is my Either I can represent something like this so this is my delta y okay sometimes uh, sometimes a circle is used or sometimes this kind of uh, you know uh, symbol is also used for voltage dependent voltage source okay uh, both are correct so this is my delta x which is input this is a voltage and the output is also a voltage and uh, delta y is nothing but the m time delta x so this is the case when both the x and y are uh, voltages if x and y are current it both currents then this can be represented by something like this So I then I can use this uh, uh, this kind of uh, shape, or I can use even circle as well. Put are fine. So 
different textbook use different you know notations so we can use this as a circle as well here to be consistent okay so then this is what this is again uh, the input here is my current which is my delta x and the output is also my current which is delta y okay and this is given by m times delta x okay so <coughs> the input is my current okay the current flowing through this is delta x and the current flowing in the output will be delta y and this delta y is given by m times delta x now the confusion happens when if x and y instead of both are currents if one is current and if the other is voltage so let's see this situation so let's consider the case my y is current and x is voltage okay So if x is voltage and y is current okay so again we have we are going to implement this equation my delta y is equal to m times delta x okay so i can rewrite this as delta x is equal to 1 by m delta y okay so instead of uh, implementing this i want to implement this one okay so and the reason will be uh, very clear once we do the implementation why i have changed it okay so now this x is a voltage and y is a current okay so that means a current is flowing through this network okay and here i have a current dependent voltage source okay positive negative and this voltage value is given by 1 by m delta y and the car input is my current okay which is basically my delta y okay so the voltage developed here across this one is basically the delta x is equal to 1 by m delta y so now if you see here because this is a uh, voltage and this is a current so the unit of unit of this m will definitely be ohm inverse unit of m is ohm inverse okay so because we uh, ultimately the lss and the rss the units should be same so we need this to be ohm inverse for this equation to be valid okay so now if we see this uh, this uh, network okay or this uh, model electrical model is this not same as if i tell that i have a resistance something like this the value of this resistance is r equal to 1 by m okay and the voltage developed across this is delta x and the current flowing through this is delta y okay so if a current flowing through this is uh, delta y then the voltage developed across this one delta x is given by by ohm's law we know that delta x is the r into the current r into the current which is y so basically it is 1 by m delta y okay so this part is equivalent to this kind of model okay so this is you know this is basically uh, you know uh, these two are equivalent so instead of using this complicated model we want to represent the same expression using a, a resistance okay because we know that this 1 by m is and the unit you know of these ohms they are same right so a, m's unit is ohm inverse and if i inverse this m the r is the ohm so uh, if i just represent this whole thing with a resistance so you know and then the you know expression becomes or the model becomes very easy to represent
okay so this is the main reason why you will see in the diet as well as in the bjt that uh, a resistance is used to uh, represent this function okay okay now let's try to relate this whole thing with the diet okay so in case of a diode it also has an exponential function something like this and why we know that it is i t okay d uh, small d because it has both the dc as well as the ac component okay and the x we know that it is v d okay <coughs> yeah the slope here m is i d by v t okay so where my id being this bias voltage which is f of xp okay this we have seen that how this is mostly defined by the resistors and the voltage source not not by the diode itself okay and then of course this value is we have 1 by rd okay so 1 by rd m is equal to 1 by rd okay because this is uh, inverse of the resistance just like uh, this one okay and uh, of course my delta x in this case is basically small vd okay change in the diode voltage okay and we know that delta y is the change in the diode current id and id is given by vd by rd okay so again we are uh, using the same uh, expressions here and why we are writing a small r instead of this capital r here is that because this is a small signal parameter okay this resistance whatever we are calling this resistance is for a small signals not for the uh, large signals okay so that's why this uh, this rd is used as with a small letter okay because this is a small signal parameter so i will just like to conclude uh, and the point that I'm repeating the point which I also have mentioned that we have to be very careful with the notation. The change is represented by small letter, you know, a small letter variable as well as a small letter subscript. Okay, if there is this capital letter uh, I and capital letter D, this is the point, the biasing point on over which we are operating. Okay, and if, if I have this uh, capital letter variable and small letter subscript, for example, ID, it is nothing but the summation of the DC voltage ID plus this small ID okay so we have to be careful with this notation and don't get confused and of course this this particular notation which is the summation of this small signal in the DC sometimes also is written as small i and capital D especially in the uh, Setter Smith book this kind of notation is used but of course we will be using the opposite notation in this uh, discussion okay so just don't get confused with these notations Okay, so with this we will end our discussion on mathematically trying to understand the small signal analysis. Thank you.